approaching its 15th year of production, the Mazda MX-5 Miata is still really the go-to car if you want affordable, fun sports car. It really is in the genre of the Lotus Elan, the MG, and a host of other uh, British sports cars from the 60s. Does it still hold up today? Is it still a fun car? Is it a chick car? Well, that's what we're going to find out here today on rumblestrip.net and 10-minute test drive. seems today everything is about power, about more, when what we really should be looking at is less, mostly less weight, less size, but then usually that comes with less horsepower. Is that a bad thing? Not necessarily. As we said in the open, for almost 15 years now, the Miata, the MX-5, has really been one of the go-to vehicles for fun-to-drive, two-seat convertible sports car. Now, in the U.S., it's been tagged, unfairly, I believe, with the term of a chick car. Why? Well, because it's a small, it's kind of a cute car, and yes, there are girls who drive it. But if you're a gearhead, a car enthusiast, a petrol head, especially an American one, and the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear Miata or MX-5 is, oh, skirt car, chick car, wouldn't be seen in them, then you're a moron. I'm gonna say it flat out, you're an idiot, you're a moron, your credentials should be pulled, you're not a gearhead. If you don't get in this car and immediately have a riot, there's something wrong with you. Now here in Michigan, we don't have a lot of curved roads, or at least in this part of Michigan, Southeast Michigan. There are some, you gotta drive about an hour, hour and a half away, but they're not that great. So in the land of urban sprawl and straight roads, can you still have fun daily driving a Miata? My answer is absolutely. We have not gotten in this car once and not had a riot in it. From the first moment till right now, as we're driving in here shooting this video, this has been fun. This is everything that a car enthusiast says they want. Small, light, nimble, tight. Hey, it's got no roof. It's fun to drive. And the best thing about it is, unlike all the big number supercars and hypercars, you can drive this thing hard at seven and eight tenths. On the street, that may not the best idea, but you can do it. But you're doing it at under triple digit speeds. So, if you do get pulled over, your ass isn't in, the, in jail immediately and your car confiscated. There's a lot to be said for that, okay? To be able to have fun at normal speeds, as we have a cop in front of us. Really the only other car right now on the market that's comparable to this is the Subaru BRZ and Honda FRS. Now, that's not a convertible, but it's their small, relatively light, nimble cars that put the emphasis on fun to drive and handling, not, you know, big, fancy you know, horsepower and torque numbers or zero to 60 in quarter mile time. They're about the driving experience. And again, that's what this car is about. It's about the driving experience. It's so rare these days to have that. Again, it's what everyone talks about, but when push comes to shove and the money is time to go on the table, they don't, they don't pull a trigger. And that's too bad, because while this car once sold incredibly well, now it's really a, really a niche vehicle. And until you drop the top and, and go for a drive on a, on a well, 
really crisp fall day. It's about 45 degrees. But you turn on the heater, you drop the top, the sun's kind of out. This is what driving is about. Really it is. Now does the Miata have some problems? Sure. The stereo feels very 2003. Uh, there's no Bluetooth connectivity. You know, there's not all the bells and whistles that you have today. Um, the There is an aux jack, as in like an eighth inch aux jack, not a USB. So for sound and connectivity, you don't have that. But as maybe bad as that may seem, it's really a good thing in that it focuses you on what this car is about. Driving. Turn everything off and enjoy the drive. Okay, maybe get some tunes going. And, and it would be nice if this thing actually had a really good stereo, which it doesn't. It's very average. Uh, and I mean that more in the Australian way of very average. Um, you know, the, the materials in here are pretty good. I, I like the dash where it's, it's the, well, it's plastic, but it's painted the body color. It has a nice, sleek look to it. In fact, it, it, it kind of calls back to something in the 50s and the 60s in that manner. Um, it is a little tight, although two people are relatively comfortable in here. You put the top up, there's decent headroom, although you, you do have to duck and, and move a little to get in and out. It's not the easiest car to get in and out of. But, you know, it's no Lotus, Lotus, uh, no Lotus uh, Elise, right? Where you, it, you need to be a gymnast to get in and out. Oh, it's pretty easy to get in and out of this thing. It's not fast in a straight line. It's, you know, fun. It's, I can't even call it quick. But it's fun. It's enjoyable. Okay, you got no problem getting on and off the, the on-ramps and off-ramps to get on the highway. Not at all. And it's got plenty of power for that. It's 167 horsepower, so not great. But again, the car doesn't weigh all that much. So you don't need a crap ton of power to overcome that. Really good brakes. Um, steering is nice and direct. It's the, the steering weight could be maybe a little bit better. It, it does feel a little light at times, but you get great feedback from the road, especially when you start to push it. You hit an on-ramp or an off-ramp or going around corners and you you just fly, okay? This thing just gives you big, you know, Jack Nicholson is the Joker kind of <laughs> kind of grin. Uh, it's it's what a sports car should be. And again, I can't tell you how much fun it is has been to drive it. Oh, it gets really good gas mileage. Again, we're not taking it easy. Okay, we're not like banging off the rev limiter all day, but we're not exactly taking it easy, and we've been getting 27 and 28 miles to the gallon. Again, what's to, what's to argue about? Okay, the trunk, not real big. You can get a few grocery bags in there. Uh, you know, if, you're, if you want to take a trip with your significant other, you can throw you know, two bags in there, maybe. Well, two for sure, but not much more than that. It's a, it's a nice weekend car or a couple day car, but it's not a long road trip car. At least with one other person. As on your own, hey, why not? It makes a good sound. It brings a, a smile to your face. Value, new case. Here's where we start to get a, a little bit. Now this is the club edition um, with the hard top and we're talking $29,000. That's a bit pricey, especially when you consider what else is out there in the market at, at that price that it may offer you a little more flexibility as far as people people carrying capacity and uh, cargo capacity. But do they, but can you put the top down? No. Will it bring as much of a grin to your face? Probably not. So what's that worth? A lot, really. Now let's answer this final question. Is it a chick car? Girls can drive it, but it's not a chick car. This is a true gearhead car, and an, an, a sports car enthusiast car. It's rear drive, it's light, it's a convertible, it's fun to drive. Okay, if we turn the traction control off, we could do better, better spins in the dirt. But again, you get in this car, and I don't think it's possible not to have fun in it. If 
you like bells, whistles, and gadgets, this is not the car for you. This is a back-to-basics sports car. And it's refreshing. You know, we're so inundated with cell phones and texts and everything's about, well, I got the latest updated nav system and, and telematic system and it does this and that and it can stream five and it acts as a hotspot. Sometimes that just gets to be a bit much. I just want to get in and drive. I want to, part of the reason you have a car like this is to forget about the outside world and go have some fun. Get away from it. And this is what this vehicle allows you to do that. Like I said, you can't pair your phone. You can't take calls hands free. <laughs> sort of a, might have some issues with, uh, with your local municipality, but I suppose you could always get a Bluetooth headset, right? Or just turn your damn phone off and go for a drive. A lot of the vehicles we get to test here at rumblestrip.net and 10 minute test drive, they're family trucksters, they're four door sedans, crossovers, whatever. Maybe once in a quarter, we get a car that we look forward to testing. And the MX-5 Miata is definitely one of them. This is a vehicle we're trying to get for about two years in and we finally got it. And it really was worth the wait. You know, is it as fun in, is, as a Mustang GT? Well, it sort of depends. I mean, we'll freely admit the bias. Love Mustangs, love the current Mustang GT. Would love to have had the, the Boss 302, the latest version. But in some ways, this is a better car. It's everything, in some ways it's what the Mustang is, and it's that it's a, it's not big, giant, gargantuan, it's, it's, it's tight, it feels well composed, but this is even smaller, I mean it's really a very tiny vehicle, doesn't have a lot of power like the Mustang, and, and yes, in a straight line it doesn't like push you back in the seat, but when it comes time to throw it in a corner, or, or go on an off ramp or something like that, this is a whole lot more fun. And if we lived in a different part of the country, I actually might prefer this over a Mustang. But here in Southeast Michigan, where the roads are long and straight, the Mustang in some ways makes more sense. Uh, you certainly can carry more. But when it comes time when they come to pick this car up tomorrow, I'll be sad to see this thing go. This has been fun, and this is a vehicle that I would spend my own money on.